Aditha Karakalan's horrible maddened laughter fell on the ears of Vandiyadeva, who was hiding in the Yalakalan gym, and made him jealous. His instincts told him that something disastrous was about to happen soon. Yama Dharmarajan in a shadowy form was present in that room with a pasakai in hand. It was time to throw the love rope. But who is he going to throw it? Whose life is he going to take? Is Kari Kalan alive? Or Nandini Devi's life? Perhaps death is approaching for both of them? Is brother going to kill sister? Is sister going to kill brother? Or are they both going to kill each other and die? It was to prevent anything of this kind from happening that Ilya Prati sent her to hurry. He has done his best. Both have been told about their relationship. The hearts of both have been softened. But, does it work? Can you stop the maddened Kari Kalar or the delusional Nandini from committing any heinous act? Does it do any good to interrupt at this point? Perhaps sacrificing his life between the two will ease their enmity? Thinking about all this, Vandiyadeva's inner sea was churning. Let's wait a little longer, he said, gritting his teeth so as not to spoil the situation by interrupting hastily. Can you stop the atrocity from doing anything? Does it do any good to interrupt at this point? Perhaps sacrificing his life between the two will ease their enmity? Thinking about all this, Vandiyadeva's inner sea was churning. Let's wait a little longer, he said, gritting his teeth so as not to spoil the situation by interrupting hastily. Can you stop the atrocity from doing anything? Does it do any good to interrupt at this point? Perhaps sacrificing his life between the two will ease their enmity? Thinking about all this, Vandiyadeva's inner sea was churning. Let's wait a little longer, he said, gritting his teeth so as not to spoil the situation by interrupting hastily. After Karakalar's hysterical laughter died down, their conversation continued. Nandini said, Sir. I have never done anything to make them happy in my life. I am happy that they can laugh and enjoy at least at the time of death. Yes, Nandini. Today is a very happy day for me. Today is the end of all the songs that you have made me sleep for all these years. This time I left Kanchi with a kind of steely mind. I was afraid that maybe my mind would get bored after seeing you. Besides, you are the sword. You gave it to me. Carrie Kalin laughed again saying that. Come again. Today, Subathanandan, too. I will not die a pleasant death like being cut by their hands. Once I had a dream that they were going to throw a garland around my neck. It did not come true. Let me have time to put the sword in their hands on my neck. Sir. So, why are you delaying? Said Nandini. It has been many years late. A few minutes delay will do no harm. Nandini. Look at me. Look at me for the last time and answer my question. Why should I garland you with a sword from the hand that should have garlanded the flowers? If what you once dreamed was true, now why not make it happen? Tell me who stands in the way. Instead of killing you, I'll kill them and try again. Said Carrie Gallon. No, sir. No. You have a million blessings. Let no one else die because of me. I will pulverize that obstacle in a moment. Don't put your burden on fate. I will rewrite the script written by Brahma, see. Nandini interrupted, you can rewrite the script written by Brahma. But can you change one's birth? She asked. What are you asking about, Nandini? Is that what my family told us when we were young that you were a butter clan girl and therefore not to befriend you? No. You and I already knew that you were raised in the Butter Clan and not born into it. I won't tell you about that now, sir. I'll tell you about the news brought by their dear friend the warrior of the Ape Clan and the news the old brat sent in haste. Have you already forgotten that I'm their sister? Nandini. When I told you about it the other day, you didn't believe it. You said it was another ploy to keep you and me apart. Then I thought about it and came to the same conclusion. If you want to do it for sure. No. No. I have no doubt of it. Gomagan. You and I are not related by blood. Then, 
what's the obstacle Nandini? I'm the one who married their father-in-law. Isn't that enough for their grandmother? Nandini. Don't try to deceive me again with that story. In front of the world you may be the youngest queen of Palyavetare. But in reality you are not married to him. You have come to his palace for some reason. This is what you told me the other time, when I asked in Tanjore. Then I told you our dream. I reminded you. You set terrible conditions for its fulfillment. You said to kill Palyavatarayar, imprison my father and sister, and put yourself in the Chola Singh Hedam. Deciding that you were a mad Rakshasi, I went to Kanchi. Then did you leave me? No. Incessantly in dreams and memories. You were tormenting me. Sometimes you cried and moaned and tormented me. Sometimes you smiled and tortured my life, sometimes you laugh like a bitch and make me mad. Komakin. Why do you blame me for their paranoia? You have benefited from the injustice and cruelty they have done to me. What shall I do for that? Do you think I am not the only one who has suffered? Do you believe that I was deeply rejoicing in the comforts of the palace of the Pavatarayar? Nandini's voice was once again full of anger and cruelty. Hearing this Vandiyadeva panicked. His body throbbed. Aditha Karakalar's voice also started rising. Are you saying that you have also suffered? If so, why should we waste our time talking about anything now? Let me know your consent to go with me and we will leave at once. I am willing to sacrifice this great Chola kingdom for you. I have renounced my birth country, my parents and my closest relatives. I am coming by ship and sea. Let us cross. Beyond the seas lie many wonderful islands. Let us reach one of them. This kingdom is greater to me than to you. Komagana. You will give up your kingdom even if you give up. But you will not consent to the daughter of this low caste to ascend the ancient Chola throne, will you? After saying that, Nandini laughed and the spark flew. Woman. Look at it differently. Is the Chola lioness superior to me? Is all the love you have shown me since that day an act of desire to mount the lioness and wear a crown? Said Carrie Gallon. A.G.A. Keep it as it is. I want palace life, royalty, and throne. For these, I married Palyavetarayar. For these, I tried to save Veera Pandyar. A.D.I. Badaki. Why are you saying his name now? Carrie Gallon roared. How could I have been deceived? Where is that Badakan van die the van? Where's your new boyfriend? Thus Aditha Carrie Kaler started running around the room swinging the knife shouting frantically. At one time he came close to Yakalanje Am. Then Nandini leapt at his feet and fell at his feet and said, Komakan. Listen to this. You have a million merits. Listen to what I say and then do whatever you want. What you are saying about the Vinarkula warrior is absurd. Goddess Bomita will not tolerate it. If you harm him in any way, my dear friend Manamekali will die. She will leave. A great sin will befall them. Don't. See my chest split open. Look at my chest with the sword of Veera Pandyar. There is nothing but their lord's image inside. This is truth. 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 Nandini was surprised after saying that. Aditha Karakalan's frenzy seemed to have subsided a little again. Then why do you refuse to come with me? At least tell me that. Why do you tempt me to cut you to death by my hand? Tell me the truth. Carrie Kalan screamed. But here I tell you, there is no room in my heart for anyone but them. Although this is true, I cannot come with them. I cannot marry them. There is a great reason that prevents it. Yes, Gamakan. I came here to tell you that, indeed. I made them come too. It I came to ask them to forgive me. I came to beg them to forget this wretched man and marry a woman suitable for their clan and position. But I hesitated to say it. I am afraid to say it. I am afraid that I will make their anger burn and what more harm will come from it. If they promise to be peaceful. Tell me, Nandini. I will listen and bear it, 
no matter how bitter it may be. Just a while ago, you advised me to forget you and marry another woman and be happy. That's why I'm not angry. I'm going to be angry if you say anything else. But don't imagine anything again. Let me tell you the truth about myself. After hearing that, kill me with your own hands. But don't harm anyone else. Don't be a victim of vain sins and blame. Sin. Blame. Sin that I can incur anew what is the blame? Yet tell me, Nandini. Tell me what real reason hinders to come with me the fulfillment of our young soul's longing dream. Tell me, however dreadfully true it may be. Behind that veil there is as long as I thought that someone was hiding, and I didn't know who was hiding, my mind was restless. While I was talking to you, my heart was thinking about it. When I knew that the one who was hiding was Mani Kakalet, my confusion also disappeared. All the fear, anger, and confusion until the truth is known. No matter how bitter. Once you know the truth, your mind will be at peace, won't it? I don't know if anyone knows that but me. I haven't told anyone yet. Now I am going to tell them the first thing. Sir. I am going to tell you who my father is. Kindly remember the promise you gave me earlier. Do not give place to anger and enmity. Nandini came very close to Adithakari Kalar, putting on such a strong ritual prayer, and in a very soft trembling voice, the father who gave birth to me, is. She said. After saying that Vimi Vimi started crying. Adithakari Kalan squirmed for a moment like a man who had shed a thousand scorpions. No, no, no. Not a day. What you say is a lie, a great lie. He shouted loudly. The next moment his passion was contained. In an anguished voice, yes Nandini, yes. You must be right. Now I see everything. I see the truth of the struggle that must have been going on in your mind. I see how much you must have suffered. I see the reason for your confusion, hesitation, and your terrible plea. You are mine for that day. Falling down on my feet and pleading, how cruel it seems that I refused your request. Nandini. There is atonement for many other wrongs in the world. But there is no atonement for what I have done. There is no way through the barrier between us. Alas! How can you bear this heavy burden in your mind for so long? How could you tolerate this bad guy living on this earth? Good. The remedy for both of our lives is the same. Salvation is the same. Here, Nandini. My atonement. Vandiyathevan, who had come from the Jaffna warehouse, was listening to all the above discourses. At intervals, when Karakalar's rage was getting hotter, he thought of going between them. Then he hesitated as to what calamity might befall him. Their passionate talk was making him passive on the one hand. Nandini's statement that her father was inner did not go down well with him. But he had an inkling of what she might have said. Although it startled him, in other words it was merely a formality. He had never experienced such a shock in his life full of shocks. At last, when Aditha Kari Kaler was speaking in a soft, raspy voice, in a manner of agreeing to what Nandini had said, his curiosity also crossed the line. He wasn't so scared as long as he was screaming loudly. Now he was more afraid. Worried about what he was going to do, Jaffa poked his head out of the barn. Nandini and Kari Kaler were nowhere in sight. But he saw another scene. The scene was visible in the standing mirror on the wall. A monstrous face appeared through the secret doorway of the hunting hall. Ravi Dasan's Mukandan. In the next moment Vandiyadeva saw the secret door of the hunting hall slowly open. Through the open door he saw first the head of a tiger and then its body coming out. Immediately, life came to his body. Inspiration was born within. Hands and feet became functional. Jaffa jumped from the shelter of the barn and tried to rush out. At that moment, a hand with a vage rayuta wrapped around his neck from behind. He looked up, an auspicious figure with a bull's face appeared before the eyes. Aha! Who is he? How did he get here? What iron grip is this? The neck is strangulated. 
suffocating, the eye is catching. If a few more moments pass, life will be gone. Vandiyathevan made a great effort to loosen the grip of the iron hand and rushed out. He fell to the ground in a rush. It was as if a huge boulder had been placed on the head. For a moment millions of suns shone before his eyes, spreading billions of rays. In the next moment, so many suns disappeared. It was getting dark all around. Vandiyathevan lost his memory at that moment. A monstrous bull-faced figure emerged from the Jaffa barn, trampling over the body of Vandiyadeva lying at its door. Nandini heard a thump near the Jaffa storehouse and looked back. She saw a bull-faced figure coming towards her with a knife in hand. She stared at the figure in wide-eyed amazement. The intestines in her stomach seemed to rise up and clog her chest and throat. Wiping her eyes, she looked ahead. She saw Kari Kalan lying down. She also saw Veera Pandian's sword on his body. Then from her throat rose a terrible tone of whimpering and laughter. It made even the innocuous objects in the room like the bed tremble. Adi Badaki. Sandali. Have you fulfilled your crime? Saying that, the bull-faced figure came closer to her. At the same time Ravi Dasan also entered the hide of the tiger figure who entered through the secret door of the hunting hall and threw the tiger away as soon as he saw Kalamugana. The body of the dead tiger hit the lamp that was giving light to the room. The light went out. It showed Manamekali's terrified face for a moment before turning off. Manamegali ran from their shouting screech. The room was dark. In the darkness of the car, we heard the voice of a mournful whisper, the sound of maddened laughter, the sound of dying moans, and the sound of people hurrying to and fro.